I found on Google the picture of the wonderful high frequency induction coil, thanks to the owner, which is now on your screen. Here is how I think it works. The big laden jar at the right is filled up 50 or 60 times per second with a few kilovolts of electricity. When the jar is full, the electron spills through the spark gap into the large diameter coil at the left. The analogy with the water practically ends here. Once the electrons rush through the big coil, they will not gonna just stop at the other end. They bounce back and forth a few hundred thousands of times on top of it. This happens 60 times per second. In the small diameter coil, which has many windings, the same high frequency current, a very, very high voltage will be produced. The trick is to match flow back and forth of the electrons in the two windings. It is like soldier marching on the bridge with the right cadence. The bridge will resonate. I hope the above is clear and correct. Now let's move into the spooky dark room of Niagara Science Museum, where the vault of National Carbon used to be 100 years ago. Here is our Welch instrument, high frequency coil, ready to be fired up. The blue box in the front is a 15,000 volt, heavy duty, neon tube transformer that charged the 0.1 microfarad model capacitor housed in the white plastic container just behind, behind the transformer. The beautiful spark gap made by GE at the turn of 19th century is fed by the capacitor. The distance between the spheres is adjusted to be as big as possible and a breakdown will occur only when almost maximum voltage is reached into the capacitor. The spheres are big and heavy, delaying any significant thermal effects.